Rodcod can still pull Arc Ascended back, but there needs to be a lot of changes to make people prefer it over Arc Evolved. I believe that Wildcard needs to stop production of fantastic teams, making the Pyramine the only paid for dino in Ascended. Whilst the Pyramine was only £5, for some people paying that each time a DLC releases just isn't possible. They could also raise the cost of the future creatures at any point. A much fairer solution is offering items and cosmetics that do not affect the balancing of the game. If Wildcard wished to continue releasing the Tames plan for free, that is fine. But I personally feel that some of the creatures do not fit the theme of maps well enough, especially the Oasis or and Pyramine. Bob's Old Tales for Scorched Earth was mostly good, excluding the Oasis or. The poker table and other structure cosmetics are cool, but they do not affect the game balance. The train is expensive enough and not overly useful for it to affect PvP, but do provide value to the pack. My current worries is for Aberration and Extinction. Aberration is supposed to have a steampunk theme. I personally do not think it fits the map. But the positive to it is that I don't have to use it if I don't want to. A lot of people are concerned about the blimp shown in the BTT art, but if you look closely you can see a player is able to sit in the underside of it, so it should be smaller than a rock drake. It might be annoying if it is easy to craft and can rapidly ascend, but it doesn't seem as game breaking as people might have thought it was. Extinction's theme fits really well in my opinion, but also has the largest potential to be unbalanced. The car could be used for a lot of glitches, whereas the train was bound to rails so it was more secure. I hope they don't add more creatures to BTT, but seeing as it is incredibly likely, I hope they at least make them more suited to their maps, as the Oasis Hall really does not fit Scorched Earth. I also hope they make them more balanced, as the Oasis Hall is too good for PvP. The Power Rangers cosmetics released a short while ago, and a lot of people were annoyed about it. In my last video a lot of people were upset that they were focusing on cosmetics rather than performance upgrades, and whilst I do understand the frustration, they are not the same teams working on it, so it will not delay any updates. I also watched videos where people were upset due to it's not fitting Ark's theme. And whilst I can understand that, not many of the original cosmetics do fit the theme. And as some have come to realise, this is a much better alternative to pay to win. I think a better crossover can be done, but this is a good start. Recently on Twitter, it has been confirmed that Ark Ascender will be upgraded to Unreal Engine 5.4 over the summer. It is currently on 5.2, and with this upgrade they expect dramatic performance increases, including graphical enhancements, memory reduction and more. I have been looking into it and it seems that having 32GB of RAM is a dramatic improvement to 16, so hopefully this update will mean that people with 16 have a significantly better experience. Digital Foundry called Arc Ascended Legendary Suboptimal, and their video speaks volumes about Arc Ascended's performance. There are a lot of features that come with 5.4 and hopefully the developers can start using them to improve performance of the game, and once they have done that, they can use them to make the game look better. A dev replied in a Twitter thread that 5.4 paralyzes the render thread, and that they were optimistic for dramatic performance improvements. I hope that this is when the upgrade to 5.4 happens and isn't just something that could allow them to optimize. I hope to see them improve on settings as a lot of them do not make sense, and certain things are bound to settings such as image overlays being dependent on settings and hardware, even though it could be loaded fine. I just hope that the upgrades later this summer are everything we want, but I think we shouldn't get our expectations raised. Unfortunately, the most recent community crunch didn't shed any light on this. Wildcard randomly announced and dropped Club Arc, and I think that it is a great addition. The missions are quite fun, and it allows Wildcard to add more incentive for cosmetics and bobstaw tails though I think they should add better missions that give similar rewards for people without the pack, even if those missions are not as high quality. Going forward they have confirmed in a Rails Clock stream that they do not plan to have microtransactions involved with Club Arc, and for the continued success of the mode, this needs to stay. They have already announced that there are more missions on the way, and I think that future DLCs such as Aberration and Extinction need to have their own missions or even maps, with items relating to those maps being rewards. Speaking of rewards, they should consider adding an artifact wheel and a tribute wheel, which will be discussed more in the PvP balancing section. In my last video I expressed a few issues with aspects of Arc Ascended, and here are my ideas for fixing them. The water in Ascended isn't fun, I would like to allow for creatures to push each other out of the way, especially if it is a larger creature, to prevent being swarmed. I also think that the Mosasaurus needs a rework, as it is currently a team that not many want. The current choices for water teams are between the Basilosaurus and the Tusa. The Mosa is simply too slow, has too large a turning radius and is not strong enough. I think making it so it can turn using less space and also giving it an ability that makes it worthwhile would do a lot to make the creature a more picked option. I have found that there has been a decrease in the quality of deep sea loot crates, and one of the better ways is now in treasure maps. 
As those are paid for content, I think to offset the pay to win aspects, deep sea loot crates should be buffed, specifically on Scorched Earth where the numbers of drops were decreased. Wildcard introduced a nerf to crab pods when they released them in Ascendant. This buffed cave bases as people can no longer fit certain creatures in them, and it has made circling them a lot more difficult. As only three maps have been released, and none of those have rat holes or a large amount of caves such as Crystal Isles and Extinction. This means that there can be very few tribes on a server past a certain point, especially due to the tech difference. Bases outside of caves are unlikely to get tech tier, which means rock golems and oasis are incredibly effective at soaking them. Wildcard have accidentally buffed caves in a way that has led to land bases being nerfed even more so than evolved. I don't play PvP enough to make a call on the meta, but it is clear that it is currently unfair. Wildcard can have both caves and land bases be viable through being able to gain artifacts through club arc. This would allow for tribes who cannot have access to caves to get tech, which protects their base from golems, though they are still readable from oasis holes and larger circus. I think Wildcard needs to add a nerf to caves, either by making it so some of the smaller circus can fit better, or in the way that makes living in caves more difficult. Wildcard either needs to choose which bases they want, or allow both of them to be viable. Ascended added a few new creatures, most of which I feel need changes. The Oasis Sort is too strong for PvP currently, as they are both too easy to tame and too useful for raiding. Increasing the difficulty for taming them and making it more costly to raid someone through the Oasis Sort would make the creature better balanced. The Fasola is simply not worth it and is one of the worst additions Wildcard made. They need to make the taming easier, as it is simply just annoying. Making it so they can be knocked out using hard surfaces is one option but the easier implementation would be make the weaker rocks do more torpidity. Once tamed, the Fasola still isn't very good, and if you look at the concept art, it used to have an immobilizing bite, which combined with the platform saddle made taming rock golems easier. At the least, the immobilizing bite could be introduced, but I would also love to see a platform saddle. I want to like this creature, but currently I can't. The Gigantoraptor is a little too complex in my opinion. Changing the buff to babies to make it a simple percent increase if imprinted by the raptor would make it both more useful and easier to understand. I also think that the movement for the Gigantoraptor is too fast, and decreasing the speed a little would be a good change for its balancing. The Pyramid needs to be nerfed, currently it has too many strengths for a paid creature. The flamethrower ability needs to be not as powerful, as a good way to kill players is to simply pick them, then the Pyramid on your shoulder will flamethrower them through your team and kill them quickly. I also think that players who have bought the Pyramid can tame them, but any player should be able to ride them if on their tribe. The Shasta is a little overly complicated, and certain abilities have too little utility to make it worth it. Therefore, removing the Sonar Pulse and Flashbang would make the Shasta feel better as its abilities are clearly useful. I also think that there should be a primitive saddle, as a lot of people do not want to use tech, and do not want to kill a boss before being able to ride one. Maybe I will make a video about creatures that need some TLC, as I have ideas for the dinosaurs. The island was a relatively good overhaul, but there are a few points that could be changed. The foliage increase is too much, and reducing it would make a lot of gamers' systems run better, and actually make it look better, as it currently looks like a mess of shrubbery. I also think that some way of getting polymer in large quantities would be better. I still think it should be difficult. But currently the main way is through Penguin, which whilst are in a hostile environment, provide incredibly little polymer compared to the maps after. Scorched Earth has Mantis, Aberration has farmable nodes in the red zone, Extinction you can get it from any corrupt creature. Scorched Earth was unfortunately quite a simple upgrade, and it still feels like it had a lot less development time compared to Aberration's map. They reduced the silica pearl spawns outside of certain rivers. I think this should be undone, as dry river silica pearls were a good way for them to be obtained. I also think Black Pearl should have a harvestable node, rather than just Deathworms which, with Ascenders changed to their camera, are harder to locate. Scorched Earth is one of the worst maps for obtaining tech. Like I discussed in the balancing section, Scorched Earth had to reduce red crate spawns. They should increase the number in the desert area. The centre was their worst overhaul though, and the dehydrated rock should be swapped for green grey ones, which would bring back a lot of the missing personality to the map. This shouldn't be overly complex, they would take time and storage. One of my largest gripes with the overhaul is the lava island. I think that the landscape changes are fine. I don't like it but I can accept it, but the colour changes and the over foliation is too much. Making it closer to the original, with mostly black terrain and charcoal trees, would do a lot to make it better and unique. Aberration has always been one of my favourite maps, and I really hope they do it justice. 
The community crunch only told us that they are releasing Aberration in early September. I really hope they don't overfoliate this map or any going forward. But knowing that this is likely they already have, I hope they either reduce it or have managed to keep the original feel. Aberration raises some concerns as the performance on Evolved was always the worst on this map due to needing to render the cave walls at all times. This combined with rendering more foliage could quickly make most players unable to play this map. Aberration is a no-fly zone, and in Evolved the Space Dolphin, Managama and Blood Soccer can be used. For Ascended I really hope they change this, the vibe of Aberration would be a lot better without them. The Rock Drake is the ultimate travel man of Aberration, and the Yiling seems to be an easy to get version of this, but also has combat capabilities. I think the Yiling should have limited gliding, something similar to the Giga Interruptor, but preferably worse. One thing they really need to avoid is making the surface survivable. This completely goes against law and would make PvP unfair, as surface bases could only be raided during night. I think more rat holes or cave holes should be added. It fits the theme of Aberration and could be good for solo players looking to stay hidden. Aberration is one of the most popular maps. If Wildcard sticks to what it was, it will be fine. Extinction's Wasteland does not feel quite how it should and improvements can be made. The snow, desert and forest biomes should be made so that they can be started in and built up alone. Let's talk about the desert for example. There should be areas where the difficulty is easier, with less hostile tames. All basic resources should be available within the biome. Currently, the desert is hostile all over from Carnos and Velonosaurs, and starting there is not very fun. This concept will be discussed more during Genesis, as it suffers from it a lot more. I have a feeling certain base spots may get patched, such as the Southgate rat hole. I think that instead of patching them, they should be revamped, so instead of being a simple rat hole, could be an official spot with proper balancing. From my experience, mechs don't feel how they should. In PvP they are good for clearing spam and the shield module is okay, but that's about it. I think that the modules could be significantly improved and that would bring up their utility. The missile pods feel useless, so making it so larger creatures like titans take more damage from them or even get stunned for a short time if all missiles hit could make it a useful module. The cannon module is okay for taming titans, but I think that if used against force fields, doing more damage could make them more useful in large scale PvP. The Enforcer currently feels gimmicky, and now that we have small but strong creatures like the Shadowmane and Pyromane, bringing the Enforcer in line with these could make it a lot better. The Dreadnoughtus looks interesting, and could be a good way to fight the Titans. I am excited for it, but for PvP could be too strong if it's able to soak turrets well. Genesis 1 is one of my least favourite maps, and suffers in several areas. Whenever I go to the map, all areas excluding the ocean feels too dangerous. I think that the bog, volcano and arctic need to have properly balanced areas, as it is all the same difficulty. It suffers from the same issue as Extinction's bubbles. There needs to be clear cut, easy and hard zones to find. The island has beaches, forests and mountains in terms of difficulty scaling. Genesis 1 doesn't. Each area should be able to be lived in, maybe excluding the space area. The space biome and volcanic area feel too harsh with the space having the quick killing cold and inconsistent radiation. I think that having set timers rather than shadow could make it more fair. I also think that the teleporting mechanic feels cheap, and having it work like the concept part would be cool, though difficult to implement. Genesis missions are incredibly difficult to do alone, and are often left to random chance. I recently had a struggle with one of the missions, where I had to dismount in an area where magma missiles and lava golems spawned. There was no chance of killing them, as I was alone and on a time limit, Therefore, I had to just try and dip in and out. This led to my death and was not fun at all. I think that a big issue for people is that a large portion of the map cannot be built in due to being mission zones. Genesis 2 showed that they could do missions outside of the playable area and Genesis 1 should be changed to do that also. The space whale is a bit of a useless creature and buffing it could make it a worthwhile tame. I think its teleport is too short range and slow. Maybe it could have more range and be faster. It could also have quick teleporting across biomes. I think that its bombs and turrets are weak, and making them stronger could improve their performance in raids. The Ferox is another creature that is too niche. It requires element to tame and use, and even then isn't very useful. I think that removing the element aspect, and instead using element shards, would be a good enough buff without making it overpowered. I also think that they aren't strong enough to make it worth it, so they should have a stat buff. The swarms of Genesis are a pain, they are difficult to deal with, and are just an annoyance. Making them less frequent and less annoying would be a positive change. Genesis lacks base locations for PvE, so when the map is overhauled, I hope they make it better. The Bloodsucker is a very fast creature, and like the Maywing, broke the meta at the time, so I think it should be a lot slower, as Ark had a thing of making each DLC more powerful than the last, 
to the point it was too powerful. I also think that the skiff should be nerfed in speed. Genesis 2 needs a complete revamp. It has such little biome variety, each ring is practically a single biome. This was a result of spawning with a tech suit, so not many players have had to run around like we would for other maps. The tech suit spawn should be removed, and more biomes than actually having good terrain should be better. The main wing is far, far too strong. It is a fast team and can travel the map in seconds. Element gathering in the space biome is ridiculous. It makes it trivial. This needs to be undone. The Noglin was supposed to be good for PvP, but it really wasn't. It is an annoying tame and simply isn't good for PvPers. It really needs a buff when it's added. The Shadow Mint is annoying to tame with fish baskets. Personally, I would want it to be less frustrating, but I also think that the Shadow Mint was overpowered in Evolved and seriously needs a nerf when it's added. The Strider is overpowered. It is the best gatherer for basically every resource and is not too difficult to tame. I think making it more specific in what it can farm would make it more balanced. Again, Genesis 2 suffers from having missions take place in playable areas, especially in PvE, where they often lead you into bases, which makes it a lot harder to complete and also can endanger other players. I'm hopeful for the future of ARG, but knowing wildcard and snail games, it won't be as good as it could have been. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing.